G'day and welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is we're going to continue to look at algebra. Um, now in the first video we were looking at algebra, we were basically doing some very introductory sort of things, looking at how algebraic expressions were put together and writing some very basic ones as well as simplifying them. So this sort of leads on from there where we're going to have a look at how to actually write some algebraic expressions from worded sort of problems before we get to the next stage of algebra. Now, I'll give you some examples here. We've only got a, a few examples here, but they, they, they sort of sum up what we should be up to so far. So say we have this sort of question, Allah has four bags of apples. Okay, so we've got two parts of this. If our, each bag has nine apples, how many apples does she have? And then we're going to go into if each bag has X apples, and this is where it's maybe a varied part of, you know, that can change how many apples does she have. So I'm going to start off looking at this with nine apples. So an example here, what I'll do is I will draw these four bags, okay, for this part A. So each one has nine apples in it. Okay, there's my bags and each one has nine apples. So you might be able to work out how many apples she has all together. She has four groups of nine, so four times nine, which is equal to 36 apples. Okay. Now let's do this algebraically. So, so what we say what we actually have now is we have these four bags. And so I'll draw these four bags. Okay, one, two, three, four. And instead of actually knowing that they have nine in it, we actually now have this variable amount in it, okay? So it might be one apple in each bag, it might be five apples in each bag, it might be nine apples in each bag, it might be 126 apples in each bag. But we're looking for an expression that covers this, an algebraic expression. So like this one was up here was 4 times 9. Instead of this, we're actually going to change this to 4 times x, okay? There's four groups of x. I and mean, this is how we would write it, okay? Which we'd actually write a bit even closer as 4x. Okay, so this is the way we can write an algebraic expression with multiplication. We'll go to another example. So say here we have this type of question. We have, let's get rid of that there, and we have this one here. We have Nick is 15 years old. How old will he be in five years, and how old will he be in X years, okay? X, how will he be? And it's the same way as saying how old will he be in one, or five, or ten, or ninety years. Okay, is there a general sort of rule we can write algebraically? So let's start out with the number that we do know. And you're going to see that algebra is a lot like, with, with the letters, it's a lot like just doing normal maths. You treat them exactly the same. It's just instead we're using letters. So how old will he be in five years? So Nick at the moment is 15. So if we get 15 and we add 5 to it, we're going to get that he's 20 years old. Okay. Okay, you should be good with that. Now... When we're doing this algebraically, we can do this a similar thing. We're starting out where he's 15, but now we're saying, not in five years, we're, gonna, he's, we're saying in X years, so not plus five, we're going to be plusing X onto it, say in 90 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, whatever years, how old will he be? So he's going to be, and this is our answer here, he's going to be 15 plus X, or the way we typically write this, as we might even write this as, you might see this written, as X plus 15. I know it's sort of the same thing, and it is exactly the same thing. They just tend to like to write these uh, pronumeral, these algebraic expressions first, and they tend to like to put these ones with no letters in them last, okay? So that's a way that you can write this algebraically. By the way, each of these is equally as correct, okay? So an example of this, we could then say a bit later on, we could say, well, what happens if X is 12 years? Okay, well, how old will he be in 12? So we could say X plus 15, he'll be 12 plus 15 eh, plus 15, and he would be 27. Okay, or we could say, how old will he be in 21 years? Okay, 21 plus 15 equals 36. Okay, and this is where algebraic expressions are really powerful because you can sort of create rules where you can create rules which you can end up just substituting values in without having to do the same calculations again and again and again and again. Okay, what about we have a look at another question here. We have Peter and Alan and they have $30 between them. If Peter has $12, this is the first part, 
if Peter has twelve dollars, how much does Alan have? And the second part is if Peter has X dollars. Okay, X dollars, how much does Alan have? Okay, so let's have a look at this first part. If Peter has twelve dollars, so this stuff with between them, they've got thirty dollars. Okay, thirty. And Peter's amount of money equals okay. $12. So how much does Alan have? Between them they have 30. So 30, we can take away 12, the amount Peter has to work and how much Alan has. Okay, so 30 take away 12. And if we do this, we get the answer of $18. Okay, and yes, I haven't put dollar signs in there. I possibly should, but I'm not, not going to do that for the minute. So this is a fairly easy uh, sort of question to work out. Now, Say, for instance, we decide to do this algebraically. We don't know exactly how much Peter has, but we do know this. Okay, we do know between them they have thirty dollars. Instead of saying he has twelve dollars, we say that Peter has X dollars. So instead of taking twelve off, we're taking X. Okay, so we're going to say that Alan has thirty take away X. Okay, Peter has X, and Alan has thirty take away X. So this is uh, Alan's. And Peter has X. And between them, they have $30. OK, I'll give you an example here. We can substitute some values in here. Say we say that Peter has $10. OK, so 30 take away 10, he would have $20. And as we said here, $10, so 10 plus 20 is 30. So you can try this out. It's worth when you're first doing these, substituting a few values in just to make yourself feel comfortable with them. Okay, now the last question we're going to have a look at is this one. And this is a, a bit more of a difficult sort of one, okay? The length of a rectangle is 10 centimetres and the width is this one here. It's 4 plus x centimetres. Okay, so x might be 1, and so it'd be 1 plus 4 is 5, or it might be 7, and 7 plus 4 is 11. In fact, what about I'll draw this triangle just to, to start you out, okay? So we have this, and we have. Uh, length of 10 centimetres and we have this width of 4 plus x. Okay, so what's the perimeter of this rectangle? That's the first part and then we're going to work out the area, okay? So see how you go with this. So give it a go, maybe, maybe come back to this. Anyway, I'm going to answer this right now. So what's the perimeter of this? So you're going to realise that we've got two sides. We've got one side here and one side here that are exactly the same. And that's going to be 10 plus 10. Okay, this side and this side. We also have this side here and this side here, which is, I'm going to add this to 4 plus x and 4 plus x. Okay, so how are we, we going here? Now we can actually group all of our like terms here. So we can group our, uh, just our normal numbers as well as our x numbers here. So let's do that. We have 10, 20, 24, 28. So I'll write that in, 28. And we also have 1x, 2x. So 28 plus 2x. And that's the perimeter of this rectangle. I don't know, it seems a bit strange, doesn't it? But that's the way you could write it. Now, even if you want to be, um, you know, the way I tend to like to write them, I might put this 2x here first, so it could even be equal to 2x plus 28. Again, it's exactly the same amount. It's just written a bit different. I like to put the ones with the uh, pronumerals first. Okay. So how'd you go with that? Okay, and you could, again, you could substitute values. If you're not too sure, you could actually substitute values in. And we could say, for instance, that what about we make this x here 1? So 10 plus 5 plus 10 plus 5, it'd be 30, yeah? So does this work here? 28 plus 2x. 2 times x is 2, because x is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 28 is 30. Okay, so this expression works. Again, substitute a few values in. Check it out for yourself. Okay, what about the area of this rectangle? All right, this is a bit more difficult now. How do we work at area? We go to length times the width. Okay, so let's do this. The length, which is 10, times the width, which I'm going to group it together for the minute, which is 4 
plus x. There's a reason I'm grouping it up because if I just do this 10 times 4 plus x and I don't put the brackets around it, that makes it a little bit different, okay? So if we were to do this, we could actually leave this for the start and, and I might even, uh, no, actually I'll, I'll take it the, the next bit, but the next video is going to be looking at how you can actually expand this a bit further. So we could actually end up with a value that looked like this, 10, and just without putting the times in, we can put them straight next to each other, 4 plus x. But what we could also do is we can actually expand this out further. This is what we're going to have a look at in this next video. The way of actually expanding these sorts of expressions. We end up with 10 times 4, which is 40, and 10 times x, which is 10x. So we end up with 40 plus 10x. You might even then change this around and get the answer being 10x plus 40. Now that last step threw you a little bit. Don't get too worried about that, okay? We're going to have a look at that in the next video. Uh, title of that video is going to be expanding two factors, okay? So, anyway, hopefully that's fine with you. Now, if you're not sure of this, and you want to you, you want to uh, double yourself and make sure you're getting the right answer at the moment, what about we substitute some values in here? So, say we actually said x here, one, two, oh, let's make it two now. 10 times four plus two, 10 times six, we have an area of 60 centimeters squared. Does this work here? 10 times 2 is 20, plus 40 is 60. So you can really check your answers by substituting in values. Anyway, hopefully that was just some help. So the next video we're going to actually look at this type of uh, expanding these types of brackets. Okay, So if you get a little bit stuck on that, don't be too despondent. Have a look at this next video. I hope to see you then.